folks, today on the Stony Ridge Farm Channel, we're digging in the mud with, <laughs> with a brush cutter. This is awesome. This is called Bigfoot Cutter. Let's have some fun. Woo! Did you see that? This thing is a beast, right? I haven't seen it yet. That little clip you saw was after I got done. Today what we're going to be using is a cool brush cutter. This is called the Bigfoot Cutter from Tri Elm Precision Manufacturing. I've never used this before. We're going to match it up with our little Gale RT210. It's about a 60-ish horsepower machine and we're going to take it in the woods. First thing I got to do is get this thing hooked up and then we've got some brush and some multiflora rows and some briars and all kinds of stuff that we got to get cleared out. So instead of breaking the vent track, which I do all the time, we're going to be using something a little bit more robust, a little bit bigger, and a little more awesome, I hope. So let's get busy. We got to hook this thing up, take it up to the shop, fill the gearbox full of oil, and let her rip. I cannot wait. I can already tell it's sitting down too low, way too low. We need to get up just a little bit higher. Plug it in. Yeah. Contact. Biggest piece of junk, husky. That's a junk. That is a piece of crap. I have a bucket in my shop right here. I'll show you guys for tools that are junk. And right there it goes. Husky. Let's get a little guy here, a little crescent. When we fill this full of oil, we fill it with that, and we take this out. And and we fill it up to that level right there and when it pours out we know we've got enough in there it's just gear oil nice and snug it's a cool pump it's got a McNaught pump it's my gear oil all I have to do is just squeeze the trigger with my McNaught Brand new, we'll pump it full. About 12 good pumps. Lock and lube, baby. So we got everything lubricated and full of grease. I want to show you guys underneath. 
So it just has basically a standard brush hog or rotary cutter blade. It has a stump jumper right here. So if you hit a big stump or something like that, um, we've got a lock nut right there, a castle bolt that holds everything together. Looks pretty simple, pretty simple design. Basically just a rotary cutter that's designed to fit on the front of a skid loader. It looks very, very similar to a standard rotary cutter you put on the back of a tractor. I'm real curious. Uh, this is supposed to cut up to four inch stuff. So up to four inch debris. I'm real curious about that. We do have some skid plates on here. A little skid right there, skid plate right there. And I've got this thing set to where it'll cut yeah, about eight inches high. We don't need to take it down to the ground and risk hitting a bunch of rocks on our first time anyway. We're gonna try this on the skid loader here. We're gonna leave that right there for a second. And we're also going to try it in some areas that I don't want the land torn up. So the skid steer is great if we're in the woods or something like that, and it doesn't matter. But we're also gonna put this on the cast loader. And this is an articulating uh, cast loader right here. So it will mount right up to that and it'll hook right up to the hydraulics on the cast loader. So be sure you subscribe, stay tuned for a future video. This is a little more, is a little more, a little less horsepower, a little more comfy, and just a tiny, tiny bit more unstable. It's an articulating loader. Again, stay tuned. We'll put you in that in a future video. All right, let's get this puppy down the road where it goes. All right, so we did a little section in the woods there. It looked pretty cool. Uh, learning curve. Keeping the back end down while I mow because you gotta think about this, it ejects everything out the front end. It spins clockwise, clockwise? I believe it's clock, <laughs> I don't know. I think it spins clockwise, but it kicks it out. You gotta figure out which way it spins. So when you first get this machine, raise it up ever so slightly, bump it, slightly not to where you can see the blades but be careful and make sure you're turning it in the right direction you can mess up and turn it in the wrong direction so what we got to do here is this is dog fennel this is the scourge of the farm this stuff gets a woody stem the cows won't eat it it smells like dill it smells pretty good we're gonna mop this up real quick this is a little section down here where we had hay stored last year and it's just notorious for piling up dog fennel we'll also see if we can get underneath our fence wire which would be a blessing if we could get up underneath there and clean up just a little bit fingers crossed on that one i think i'll go ahead and open this gate and that way i can get through in case i need to do that 
We'll just get this guy back. The cows will be in this section right here in about three days. So let's mop it up, see what it does. You can see where I mowed before, all the dog fennel's gone. Where I didn't mow, the dog fennel's still there. What? Look at that. What a job. That thing did an awesome job. It just mopped it up and I could drive underneath the fence right there. Super happy. So that's what it does on weeds and grass. Let me just take you and get you a little close up here. I didn't know it would cut this good. I will say that when you're running a skid steer and you're out in the grass, you run a risk of tearing up your grass. And this thing does take a little bit of fine tuning. You can see I hit the ground there a couple times, dug in, spun some uh, nice turf up right there. I hate to do that, but that's just part of the learning curve. It cut nearly as good as a zero turn, guys. Look at this. That is really nice compared to that. I mean, look at the difference. Did a fantastic job. We're in the jungle, baby, woo! This is what we're cutting. These are saplings, guys. This is just debris and mess all in here that needs to go. We've got some monstru monstrous multiflora rose, the scourge of the farm, the second scourge of the farm. So what we gotta do is be pretty careful not to hit any stumps. So if we leave anything behind, it'll be because there's rocks and stumps. I know there's one big rock over here. Don't wanna hit that. So cows can't eat this stuff. They can't graze on it. We gotta cut it. This is probably, oh, a week and a half before the cows get over here. And if there are any wild cherry trees in here, they'll have time to rot so the cows don't eat them because that is poisonous. But lots of multiflora rows in here, guys. Cedars, multiflora rows, trees. That's a 20 foot tall tree. That's what we're gonna be plowing through. I cannot wait. This one is gonna be fun. Look at that.
<laughs> Guys, holy cow, look at that. That is amazing. Let me show you again the before and after. This is unbelievable. This is exactly where I was standing. I had one foot on this rock. That is the after. Holy cow, this thing kicked butt, man. So I probably got in here and cleared. You see how pretty these trees are? These are all poplars, and then there's a couple oaks over there. Gorgeous trees. When we cut the timber in here, we select cut a few, and we left a few of these really large trees. There's some oaks in here that are probably, I don't know, 250 years old. Stuff that's been here since the Civil War time. Really awesome, before the Civil War. Look at how good that did. I did tear up a little bit uh, riding around with the tracks because the ground was quite uneven through here. However, it did even out the ground pretty good. So let's walk over here and take a look at the machine. I beat it up. Uh, <laughs> I beat it up pretty bad. I can see a few dings, no chips in the paint or anything like that, but I see a few dings in it where I hit the ground and bumped into stuff. At first, I was really nervous about hitting the ground and then I just let her rip tater chip, so I had no issues after that. I just let it rip. Uh, it doesn't really hurt it too much. It probably dulls the blades quite a bit to hit the ground like that, but it didn't hurt it the way it cut at all. I ran over each spot twice, so I would go over it once, and sometimes it would push debris up, and then I would go over it again. But that is the Bigfoot Cutter, guys. I'll post a link to it in the video description. Super happy. Stay tuned. We're going to try it on the other machine, that cast loader. I'm excited about that, too. I think the cast loader has a little bit higher hydraulic flow, and this is a low-flow machine. So this will work on a tractor. It'll work on a skid steer. It'll work on a cast loader. It'll work on most anything with a hydraulic hookup. You just have to have the appropriate connectors. Really cool. What do you think, guys? Let me know. Post a comment down there. You think this turned out great? I'm super happy. Holy cow. Cutting grass, it did great. Cutting the brush over there, I say brush, but the weeds, it did great. It cuts like a zero turn, and it basically forestry mulched all this. Cool. Good stuff. Thanks, guys. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. Love to have you back here on the Stony Ridge Farm with me. That is a cool machine right there. See you next time. Hey you guys, welcome back to the thing. Is my, is my microphone working? Yes it is. <laughs> camera fail again. I guess I gotta throw away my, my newest GoPro camera because all GoPros suck. <laughs> this one keeps turning off. I don't know. Is that a good blooper? <laughs> I've got a little baby, little drink umbrella for my camera because it's so finicky. It likes to break and fail and turn off while I'm filming. It's not doing anything because the sun is not above it with the cool new brush cutter the bigfoot brush cutter from trial <laughs> get off me dude i don't want no no dang on skeeter bite right there she's gonna get bit me but i don't don't be smoked if you don't have a place to go i don't know if i don't know we got word salad camera's blazing hot i don't even know why they have 4k on these cameras i don't need a wasp in here bro <laughs> Don't forget, when you go to take a drink, that you got that field in your face. I've got a drone over here that's sitting in a cow patty. <laughs> I'm your Venus. I'm your fire. Your desire. Isn't fun fun?